Hello, we're here with uh, Pupper's Corner, Season 1, Episode 3. I'm Michael. And I'm Sammy. And we're talking about hiking with dogs today. Woohoo! So, um, where do we start? Uh, so, we're, um, our website is pupperscornerpodcast.com. Uh, come check us out. Uh, what do we do? We talk about all things dogs. Yep. Um, and a caveat, we are learning right along with you. A lot of this stuff uh, is new uh, that I've learned. Uh, so every week, it's kind of a passion project for me to learn as much about dogs as I possibly can so that um, our little furry friends have the best life possible. So let's dive in here. Um, uh, so the first thing you do is, in, is uh, you need to have the right equipment. So um, at my house, we have a backpack with all the stuff already ready. Um, I know. I'm kind of weird that way. It's kind of awesome. I don't have a backpack <laughs> ready. but I And it just helps you remember everything. So yeah. you, know, you just grab it and go. Uh, so what do you put in it? Um, well, first off, you need water. Yes, and why do you need water? Well, obviously, it's uh, important for life, uh-huh. and uh, and you know you need water, so the dogs are going to need water too. Mm-hmm. And they, from the articles I've read, most of this information comes from Dr. Karen Becker at uh, Healthy Pets Mercola's uh, website, and uh, you'll have a link for that. But um, they really shouldn't be drinking the water in the streams or the ponds. Um, they can carry. Uh, um, Pest, uh, parasites yeah. and stuff and make them sick. So I've never had yeah. that happen. And then my dogs sometimes when they go swimming will drink the water and yeah. try to get them to stop. But sometimes they... I've never known to make Daisy stop. Um, mm-hmm. But now that I do, I'm like, oh, man, she loves, like, swimming in the water and everything. But this, um, but the parasites can cause, like, you know, lots of sick symptoms. Sure. And they won't show up until, like, a week later. Yeah. And... Uh, Stop frequently for water breaks, and um, I was uh, researching, and this is from uh, REI.com, that you should, for larger dogs, you should have one ounce per pound of water, Oh. if you're going for the whole day. So oh, okay. For me, personally, I have an 80-pound dog and a 60-pound dog, so I did the math on this, and I should carry one and a half gallons of water. Plus the water for yourself. Yeah, for, plus the water for myself. Oh, my gosh. I know. That's heavy. Get yeah. a workout carrying your backpack. Oh, geez. Yeah, for sure. Um, first aid kit should be in there for sure. Um, I've never had uh, the dogs get injured on a hike yet, uh, but I'm sure, I mean, odds are something could happen, so it's mm-hmm. good to have that in there. Um, a water dish, uh, something plastic to put the water in because it. I've forgotten that before, and you lose a lot of water when you have them drinking right out of the bottle or whatever. So that really helps. And um, I saw on um, several websites, the camping sites, they have collapsible ones. Yeah, they do. I've seen those. So that helps um, save space in your backpack. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, what else you put in there? Oh, I, in my research, I found a really cool thing. Like, I've never heard of these. A collar that you soak in water and wrap around their neck to help keep them cool. Sorry. Whoops. Oh, uh, it's a uh, it's uh, about six inches wide, and you wrap it or and you soak it in water and wrap it around their neck to keep them cool. To keep them cool. That's kind of. And awesome. it's made of a material that holds the water longer than just wrapping a towel or something around the neck. Um, and it has a hole for the leash. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Because overheating is a big problem. Oh yeah, especially in the summer, obviously. And, like, if you're getting hot and your dogs, you know, obviously they can't sweat. So, um, frequent breaks and, during, and frequent water breaks and um, the cooling collar sounds like a good idea. I'm going to add that to my repertoire. <laughs> um, a towel. Um, just good to have in the backpack. Mm, so, and uh, what I learned here recently. Yeah. Have an extra leash. That's a good idea. So I I have inevitably broke a clip on the leash or and then I ended up having to just tie it around the neck or something because and get out of there because my leash is broken so I always just have an extra leash in my backpack. That's a great idea. Is there anything else you though I haven't mentioned that you take? 
Well, I want to get hiking boots for my dog. Yes. Um, they sound, I know, I don't know, a piece of me feels like they sound silly, but my dog, Daisy, she, like, I don't know, I feel like dogs, different breeds might have more sensitive paws. Um, maybe they're thinner or something, I don't know, but she always, after we go play somewhere or something, she always has little cuts on the bottom of her paws or mm. cracking or... Something, because she plays so rough, I'm assuming. I don't know. But I'm thinking if I get her some hiking boots, they'll protect her little feet, and it'll be fine. Do you think she'll let, let you put them on her and leave them on? I Well, well okay. For Easter, <laughs> you know Easter bunny ears? Yeah. I'd put them on her, and she would wear them all day. Oh, wow. So maybe. I don't know. But I don't know if my dogs would go for that. Oh, and another thing to put in, in the first aid kit, make sure you have, what's it called, styptic powder. What's that? That's a, it's a powder that helps if your dog gets cut, oh, it helps clot it. Yeah. So that's good to have in there. I've heard okay. Of that. So I think we got pretty much everything, the basics to take in the pack with you. So the next thing is uh, the article I read talked about scouting out the trail beforehand if you don't mm -hmm. already know it. And that makes sense just uh, for safety of the dog. And then if you're traveling, I didn't think about this before. It's common sense. Find the closest emergency vet clinic. Yeah. So in case something does happen, uh, you know where to go. Because when you're in an emergency situation, you're not always thinking straight. So mm. You never perfect. really think that your day is going to go bad like that. Well, well sure. So, yeah, but it's yeah. always good to be prepared. So in case it does, you're ready. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So um, I, I got a few horror stories with hiking. How about you? You said... Your dog um, is like the best behaved dog in the world, so. So I don't really have any horror <laughs> stories, but yeah. <laughs> okay, so, and then an, another thing to, to think about, and that I didn't, I always thought, you know, hey, they're running, in, they're chasing um, squirrels, they're chasing rabbits, that's good for them, it's entertaining for them, but the article I read said, don't let them chase wildlife. Yeah. Because they can get in a dangerous situation. Um, I got a funny story about that. <laughs> so um, we went um, to my mother-in-law's place, and it was in the spring, so it was um, prime mushroom hunting season. So I thought that'd be an awesome time to get the dogs out. They'd be out in the woods with us while we're picking mushrooms. Didn't think nothing about it. And uh, we come across a porcupine that oh. was cornered kind of under these this brush and my dog's heading right for this porcupine thankfully it got up the tree before uh, molly got got there but she'd never seen that and she always chases rabbits and you know when we go on hikes and stuff so i have no doubt she would have chased it tried to catch it she could have gotten the prickles. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, that would yeah. have been an emergency situation. It really would have, yeah. Yeah, so um, again, oh, I forgot the most important thing to what? take on your hike with you. Do you know what it is? No. A well-trained dog. Ah, uh, that's funny. <laughs> so uh, you want to make, just bone up on the your basics. Um, you want them to be, come to you when you call them, obviously, because if they're, you, you can see if they're in a, situation that could be dangerous and you want them to come back to you you want them to make sure and do it yeah i've learned um so daisy i've always just kind of let her off the leash and if we go hiking or something sometimes i just let her off the leash as no one's around right sure. well i mean i've known that some places you're not supposed to do that but i'm like it's fine well i've learned a lot of other reasons why you don't let your dog off their leash it's i mean there's traps places like bear traps yeah. And those, and those automatically crush your dog's throat, oh, yeah. so that's depressing. Oh, yeah. But So there's tons of animal traps out there, and then also they could get lost. And then also if it's a new place and they're running full speed and then they go to turn, oh, there's a cliff there they didn't know. I yeah. mean, I read that um, dogs are a lot like toddlers with the fact that, you yes. know, they have short attention spans, you know, if they're in a new place, they don't know what they're doing. So yeah. pretty much where would you let your toddler go? Would you let them just be free in the woods? No, you'd probably have them at least 10 feet. Not know. if you were unaware of the terrain. And, yeah, yeah, not not if it's all new to you guys. So yeah. And, yeah, and hiking with dogs, unless they are, you've done it before, you know, flat terrain is better. 
then obviously big cliffs and things like that. Yeah. Um, and that's that brings me to my next point. Um, when you're out hiking, we, we there's a little lake in our area, and we hike it all the time. And one area we're really used to, so I let them off leash. So yeah. it's fine. Well, I thought, hey, let's explore that back side of that. It has a little spillway, so the spillway goes down behind the little dam it has. I said, let's go explore back there. I've never been back there. And big mistake because there's like a 30-foot drop. So I, that I had no idea. First time both me and the dogs have been back there. So, yeah, being spontaneous on hikes is probably not a good idea just because you don't know the train and they don't know the train. And, um, can be a dangerous situation, especially if your dog doesn't come back to you right Yeah. at the time. They're, they're exploring. They're having fun. And they don't want to come back to you. So you really got to train them. to. I found that if you always, when you call them, it's time to leave. It's not a good idea because they get in their mind. When he calls me to come to him, then we're, leaving. we're leaving and it's, the fun's ending. So you got to mix in a come to you with a, maybe a treat and then let them go play some more. That's so that tip. Anyway, just something I've learned yeah. from somewhere. I don't know. Somebody I like it. told me that. Um, so what else we got? Um, I don't know anything else. We, we covered the good ones and that was a good one about traps and stuff. And, you know, like, and at least in, um, some areas of, um, it's probably better to, unless you have permission and I go on private property because you never know when it's going to, what's going to be there. And Well, apparently, even in, like, normal state parks, they can put traps up, and it's 100% yeah. legal. Yeah, okay. They put them so. wherever. So, yeah, you just have to be careful. For sure. Um, oh, something I wanted to touch on was um, to know when your dog is tired. Because if oh. your dog shows any signs of being tired, that means you need to turn back. Yeah. Otherwise, you're going to be carrying your dog back. And yes. I, I have a 60-pound dog. Yes. I'm not going to carry her back. You have two giant labs. Yes. You're not going to carry them back. Um, although, I'm going to tire out way before then. <laughs> are, um, until, um, you know, I have a six-year-old and a year-and-a-half-year-old. So, they, <clears throat> for, for the most part, I'm worn out way before they are. So, uh, but as they age, that's a good point to mm -hmm. just keep an eye on them. And, Signs of uh, tiring out are like any time they lag behind you yeah, at all. That's right. not normal for a dog. Right. And then laying down frequently, labored breathing, or foaming saliva. Yeah. That means they're exhausted and they yeah. need to take a break, and you guys should probably head back. Yeah. And also, interesting thing, so my dog, she loves to swim. Loves to swim like crazy. So anytime we go on a hike, I just let her swim because, you know, it makes her little heart content. Well, if you're going on a strenuous hike, it is not smart to let them swim. Because drowning can occur if they're super Tired. exhausted, yeah. and then they're like, oh, but I want to swim. Then they'll get out really far, and then they find they can't come back. So. Yeah. Keep an eye on them. So it might be a good idea to get, um, if you know you're going to have them swim, like a, do you have a flotation device? Yeah, I do yeah. now. Yes. She's got a little <laughs> life jacket. So, yeah, that's Take good. Take that with us. So if you, if you are going to have them swim, definitely have that flotation device. Okay, that's great. So um, we're, we are introducing a segment called our Breed of the Week. Um, that's where we'll dive into different uh, breeds each week and see if they are a good fit for you if you're looking for a dog. So we're going to start with my favorite breed, <laughs> Labs. Um, so uh, first thing is they originated in Newfoundland. They were bred to help fishermen bring their nets in, their fishing nets. Um, in the freezing cold water. Mm -hmm. um, the original name was St. John's Water Dog. And cool. they have a double coat, so they have their outer coat, which is coarser, and then a finer inner coat that is, you know, that repels water. Yeah. So they my dogs will swim in. The water is barely water. It's yeah. almost ice. They don't care. <laughs> as long as we're not, you know, there all day. Um, but they they have no problem being in the cold, and that's just their uh, breeding. That's awesome. Um, so their temperament is friendly, active, and outgoing. So if you're looking for a dog, and so you got to kind of match your lifestyle to the, what kind of dog you want. So they require lots of exercise. 
They love being outdoors. So if you're kind of not an outdoorsy person, labs probably aren't for you. Um, this was interesting as I've been researching. Well, they're part of the sporting group, so that's retrievers, pointers, hunting dogs, essentially. Um, you can do all sorts of things with them. You can get them into agility trials, uh, nose trials. That's where you have competitions and see who can uh, smell out different Sm smells they're used a lot for rescue work like when um, earthquakes and tsunamis and things like that looking for people because um, they're adaptable they're trainable and they have really good noses etc um, <clears throat> they're used frequently for seeing eye dogs and things like that um, they are the number one um, most popular dog that's interesting. For how many years straight do you think? I don't know. Just a guess. Just a uh, guess. Seven. 27 what? straight years. They're the most popular dog in the U.S. Okay. And um, I think it's because they're like, I don't know. I may be biased, <laughs> biased here. <laughs> but I think if you think of a, the overall qualities of a dog in general, um, you know, eager to please, um, excited to see you, those types of things. I think that fits a lab to a T. They like take those qualities and you can go above, above and beyond. beyond those. So I hear they're like big babies. Yes, and they're yeah. super on average they're super friendly. They adapt well to other people and other dogs. Um on average, not every lab is the same. <laughs> um but I have one that is like the quintessential that I was reading all these qualities and I thought, yep. That's him. And then I have another lab that, no, she doesn't quite fit the mold there. So, um, but they are wonderful dogs and, and they, their adaptability, like for example, when it's time to go out and be active and have fun, they're all on board. When it's time to chill in front of the fireplace, they're on board for that too. So they just want to be with you. Yeah. They want to be with you. Um, if you are going to have your dog outside, in the backyard all the time, probably not the dog for you. They want to be around you. So, If you're going to have a dog and they're just going to be a dog, probably shouldn't get a dog. Yeah. <laughs> That's how what I do you mean by that? It. I mean, um, <laughs> like when we were, when I was doing my research for, you know, this podcast, mm -hmm. learning about all the hiking stuff, there were so many naysayers about don't take your dog hiking and all this stuff. And it's just like, you know... If you want to get a dog and just have them not do anything with you, you probably What's the point shouldn't get a dog. Them, right? Yeah, because yeah. they're supposed to be your companion, the, your best yes. friend. Go yep. everywhere with you, Man's do everything. Best friend. Yeah, at least you know. I don't know, cuddle with them, stuff like yep. that. If you are, are getting a dog, just have them sit in a crate all day yep. in your backyard. Yeah, don't get a dog. I agree. It's one of my yep. biggest pet peeves. Yes, and I, I've seen that. I have in the past had some neighbors that. I, I'm really wondering why they even have dogs and they're in the backyard all the time and they want to, they want, they dug, dug into our yard several times. Because mm -hmm. they want to be free. Yeah, they want to be, <laughs> they want to be around people or other dogs and stuff. So yeah. anyway, that's a good rant for the day. I like it. Yeah. So anything else before we wrap up? Uh, I did want to toss in, um, earlier I talked about uh, when dogs paws crack and stuff like oh, that. Oh yeah. There's this awesome pet balm stuff okay. that you put... Um, I found mine at Petco. It's like made out of all natural stuff so they can like lick it and they're fine. It smells really good. I've used it as chapstick before. It's a good time. And you on just, yourself? Yeah. <laughs> you like rub it on their paws and it like conditions them. Okay. It's almost like lotion for their little puppy pads. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But it's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Good. Especially after a long hike, they might need that. Huh? Yeah. Like massage their feet. Ooh, I noticed my... Daisy like, likes it. <laughs> Jackson, my big lab... Uh, for some other reason, his kind of get all rough. scaly and rough, and so mm -hmm. I sometimes, you know, sand them down. So maybe some Petco told me about it. Okay, and, uh, yeah, I will definitely check that awesome out. Awesome stuff. And you guys should check that out too. Yep. All right, there's a link. Okay, we'll we'll link to it. So um, yep. we're signing off for today, and we'll see you next week. Um, our topic for next week is. Oh, um, great question. Um, Let's, okay, so we're going to talk about allergies in dogs, so like um, uh, some hyperallergic, more um, allergy-friendly breeds, and also um, 
what's the etiquette for when people are coming over to your house? Should, should you um, warn people you have dogs? When should you, you lock your dog up? Yeah, we'll should talk you? about all that next week. So we're, we'll see you then. Bye. Bye.